everybody. It's um, been December, it's um, been a while since I've done a, a video. Um, so I thought I'd do a, a quick video on a comment I actually received on a, a YouTube video of mine. Um, one of the Intel Galileo videos I shot um, a while ago um, when I received a, a free Gen um, 1 Intel Galileo board from Microsoft um, to play around so with. So John Ryder um, commented on a YouTube video um, and he writes, Hello David, I'm an intermediate, electro I'm an intermediate in electronics. Um, my friends and Microsoft student partner from India had managed to get an Intel Gen 2 board for free. I thought you being a pro it would be very helpful if you would make a video on this version of the board. Please also give a detailed sketch of what are all the things we can do with this board. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so first of all um, I'm, I'm by no means a pro um, I'm probably just enthusiastic. I enjoy these things. Um, I'm learning as we're going, um, but I'll happily share my, my experiences and, and what I've found so far. Um, so I thought today I'd take us through the differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 board. I don't have a Gen 2 board. I've had a quick bit of research for the Gen 2 boards and um, they're in the same processor. They have the same um, shield pin layouts. There's a couple of additional features which make the, the Gen 2 board quite nice and appealing, but you'd only worry about upgrading to a Gen 2 board if you have a Gen 1 board, if there was a specific need. Um, if you had a project that specifically needed the additional functionalities, um, things like the um, power of Ethernet maybe, um, or the 12-bit pulse width modulation um, functionality, um, or if you really needed a faster, faster GPIO, um, 12 of the GPIOs are now um, native, so you can code them directly from um, fr from the, the um, from the board itself. Um, but unless you need those additional specific features, you probably wouldn't need to to bother upgrading to a Gen 2 board. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at the differences, and um, you can make up your own, own mind. And I'll add, at the end, I'll add a couple of um, example projects. I mean, by no means am I going to um, provide you with detailed sketches of um, what's possible because obviously, you know, that's how long is a piece of string? I mean, you can go on forever. Um, it depends on your, your, your needs or your, um, what, what you effectively can come up with. Um, you've got 20 eye opens, you've got pulse width modulation, you've got you get a 400 megahertz processor, which is quite a bit faster than the, the default 16 megahertz processor that most Arduinos come in. Um, so I'll, I'll add a couple of examples, things that I've thought of, things I'll find on the net, um, and have a quick discussion, but um, it's, not, it's just not going to be possible for me to give you a detailed sketch. Um, there's a lot of examples. Um, effectively, you need to find a problem um, that you need to solve and just tackle that. That's, that's the easiest way I find to, to learn these things. Instead of just getting a dead board and, and playing with it, Blinky is nice, um, but what's useful for me is if you have a, a project, find some problem, um, either in your life or of a friend or something you need to solve and then solve it. Um, work until you figure out a way to make it work and, and use one of these boards by all means. Um, and that's for me the best way to learn um, these things is to actually have a project. It doesn't have to be you know, don't sign up for something that you're going know, to charge people money and they're going to have deadlines for you, but do have a project, have a goal, and then work until you achieve that. Anyway, let's look at the um, Gen 2 boards and the differences between that and the Gen 1 board, and we'll take it on there. So let's have a look at the um, Intel Galileo Generation 2 board. Um, the data sheet for this one is quite short. The assumption is that you'll probably read the first data sheet and then um, you'll have most of the detail. That's that's sort of part of part of the interesting but both generation one and generation two have the same processor. Um, but we'll get through that a bit later when we go through the um, schematics in, in slightly more detail. Um, but I wanted to just quickly start off with um, the the data sheet. 
or, or the spec, um, the overview sheet, and have a look at um, this section here, listing the second generation product enhancements. So what what they've done is they have relayed out the board, and it looks quite a bit different. We'll look at um, some images a bit later that I found on the internet. Um, and we'll see here that they mentioned 12 GPIOs, fully native for greater speed and improvement. Um, now, both boards have the same amount of um, IOs. Um, I think it's, it's 20 um, digital IOs. Um, but in the Gen 2 board, um, 12 as opposed to 6 from Gen 1 are now natively controllable. 12-bit um, PWM for more precise control servers and smoother response. Um, really nice feature um, if you need it. Um, the default 10-bit is probably enough for most applications but very useful for, for the times where you do need the full 12-bit. 12-bit um, power over Ethernet capable. And this is an interesting one we'll look at a bit later. Um, don't expect to power your um, Intel Galileo Gen 2 board um, from a power with Ethernet port um, right out of the box. We'll get into that a bit later. Power supplies from 7 volt to 15 volt are now supported as opposed to the Gen 1 board that required a dedicated 5 volt um, supply. Um, serial console UART header is compatible with FTDI USB controllers. Um, and then we can redirect via software our UART 1 to Arduino headers. Okay, the board is still um, Arduino Uno R3 compatible, um, so you can use the Arduino shields they, they fit on there in most cases. Um, and yeah, we'll, let's get into it. We'll see. We'll see more of this a bit later. Let's have a look at the um, generation one. Um, Schematic, this is the board that I have that um, Microsoft actually sent me. I have a, a special version of the firmware that allows me to run um, uh, MinWin on my Intel Galileo. Um, here we can see all the things we, we sort of used to. Um, IRF jumper, you can select between 3.3 volt and 5 volt. Um, mini PCI, uh, all the pinouts for the um, Digital and the pulse width modulation and login power. Um, so, yeah, they mentioned 5 volt power brick is required. Um, three output voltage regulator, um, FT regu regulators. So, um, you, you could select between 5 volt and 3.3 .3 volt on board. Um, and then we've got a 3 pin um, UART RS232 connector. Um, and we'll get to that a bit later. A USB host and client ports. Um, and in interestingly, still the Intel Quark SOC X1000, SOC X1000 application processor. It's exactly the same processor they're using in the, in the Generation 2 um, board. If we have a look at that. Here's our Generation 2 board. As you can see, exactly the same processor. Big differences, as we mentioned earlier, is now supporting between 7 and 15 volt input and I think that is to do with the power over Ethernet um, capability. Um, you can still select your which shield you're using, a 3.3 volt shield or a 5 volt shield, analog ends, digital ends, uh, all our pulse with modulations now 12 bit as mentioned earlier. Uh, UART has moved from the um, 3.5 millimeter jack to a stock pinout um, and I'll show you an FTDI cable that I have that will work directly on that but the rest is essentially the same if you want to just play around with um, this dev board you can pretty much do most of the stuff that you could do on Gen 1 you can still do on Gen 2 um, and it's only those specialist um, sections where you really um, need a Gen 2 but in most cases for your testing and dev purposes if you have a Gen board, Gen 1 board go with that it's it's perfectly good. So let's take a look at some visual differences between um, Gen 1 and Gen 2 boards.
All right, so this is the original Intel Galileo that I have. Um, there you can see the UART 3.5 millimeter um, jack looks like an audio jack, but it's not an audio jack. A JTAG connectors on the top. Um, this is a 5 volt um, power supply um, input LAN um, client USB host USB. Um, there's our headers for our um, shield connectors. Same as on Gen 2. They're exactly the same. Um, is our coin cell um, real time clock battery backup um, connector over there? Right, so now in on the Gen 2 boards, the differences are that okay, we've moved a couple of things around, they look a bit different. They've gone with a full um, USB socket for the host um, socket, so you can just slot your um, memory sticks in there, no worries. Um, you still use this one to, to program your, your board with. Um, standard LAN. Um, this is one of the differences. So they've gone away from the three and a half millimeter um, jack for the UART to USB connector to these um, straight pinouts. Um, here we select between five volt and three point three volt. That's our jumper there to select which types of shields you're using. If you're using a three point three volt shield or a five volt shield, set this jumper accordingly. We still have our coin cell battery backup connect over there. Um, these little unpopulated holes that you see there and there's more of them behind the land. There. That's where our um, power over Ethernet module has to be installed for this device to allow power over Ethernet. I'll go through that in a bit more detail soon. Our JTAG header has moved to the back of this board. Um, if we have just a quick slight different look. There we can see our JTAG header. Um, it's still right next to our PCI Express connector there. There we can see our power over Ethernet module connectors, both that one and that one. I'll show you how those work in a moment. Um, here's a slightly different view of, of the device. There again you can see that those power over Ethernet connectors um, carry on behind the LAN. Um, socket over there. Right, so let's have a quick look. Um, so there you can see our JTAG at again. <coughs> what what that means, what, what, what I mean by this is you have to install something. You get um, power Ethernet adapters or modules that look like this. And these are effectively the inputs from your um, twisted pair of LAN. Um, and this will be your regulated voltage that comes out of there. Um, and they have to be soldered into um, they have to be soldered into these sockets over here to allow you to power this thing over Ethernet. So that's why I said earlier, um, if you take this out of the box and, and plug it into a power Ethernet um, port, it's probably not going to be that successful. Here's a, a different view of a, of a similar module. You get these. They're about. Um, I've seen them for seven dollars. So for under ten dollars, you can add that. I think that's a great, brilliant feature for a for a um, Internet of Things device um, to allow you to do that. Um, but you know, they advertise it as as it's capable, but don't expect to see that out of the box. Okay. Apart from that, as I said, same processor, same PNIOS. If you're using a shield, you probably not notice a big difference. As I said, my specific Gen 1 board has um, firmware for um, to run Windows on it, as well as Linux. Um, I think if you buy a stock board, uh, you'll probably get one that can only run Linux. Um, but you know, why out whichever one you prefer. I'm I'm quite a bit of a Windows fan, um, so I'm quite happy with mine, and I got it for free. So. I'll probably not go out and spend the money on, on getting a Gen 2 board until I actually need the additional features that comes with Gen 2. Okay, so we've just had a look at all the um, differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 boards. Um, we've looked at some comparisons, um, you know, reasons to, to get a Gen 2 board, reasons not to. Um, I think now let's get to the, the final part of John's John's question um, about um, 
examples of what you can do with um, with the Intel Galileo. And I say Intel Galileo as opposed to the Intel Galileo Gen 2, um, because as we discussed, they're very, very similar, unless you actually need the specific new features. Um, there's, I mean, if you look at the, the various examples on the net, um, there's things like everything from burglar alarms through to, um, you know, everything, depending on which version you have. I have the Windows um, bootable version. Um, the, the Linux version is the, is the default one. Um, you can do, you know, flash little LED. You can um, set up a, a REST SDK. Um, you can run a little web server. Um, weather stations are always an interesting one. Some kind of RGB shield. Um, there's so many examples out there and every one of them is valid. Uh, one of the things, one of the sort of negatives for me with the Intel Galileo is the complexity of the board. Um, I find that's probably why a lot of people start off with the Arduino, simply because it's simpler and smaller. It, it's not, um, it's not scary, it's small. Um, where the Intel Galileo, you know, in my mind at least, I always think, you know, it's really cool. You have a 400 megahertz processor, loads of power, you have a Windows or Linux you can run in the background. Um, you know, there's so much functionality that I'd, I'd like to pick a project that I can use all of it. Um, otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting the board, but the downside is you, you end up leaving the board in the, in the cupboard instead of actually doing something with it. Um, in short, I think, Pick a problem you have. Um, as I mentioned earlier, just find something in your in your house or in your company, in your office, somewhere, some problem you want to solve and solve it. If that's if you need a burglar alarm, build a burglar alarm. If you ha need an intercom at your front gate so people can can talk to you, um, have a look at the LCD white paper that was just released, where you can add a, a an LCD screen onto the um, Intel Galileo even though it was built to be a headless unit. Um, there's a couple of nice USB um, LCD screens, which you simply plug into the, into the USB um, client, client port on your, or host port, sorry, on your Intel Galileo and off it goes. Um, so you can put a, put a screen and a, potentially a camera onto that webcam. Um, if you want to, you know, monitor your solar power usage, um, it doesn't matter. Um, you have four, 20 um, iOpens, a couple of really high resolution 12-bit um, pulse width modulation for servers, build a robot. Um, there's so many examples, just pick one. Um, if, you, if you have a look on the net, there, there's way more than I could ever cover in a, in a video like this. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear what you, what you guys come up with. Um, drop me a note, drop a, a comment in my YouTube, in the YouTube um, comments. Um, yeah, let me know. I'd love to have ideas or, or things you guys want to talk about or work through. Um, let me know. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to end there. It's a short video, but um, hopefully useful. Um, give it a thumbs up. Um, let me know if you like it. Let me know what you want me to change. Um, and yeah, finally, um, have a great 2015. I hope we all do.